Good morning. We're back to our study about the Bible. And this week we're going to pick up papyrus. And many people don't know what papyrus is. And yet it is in the study of the Bible. And it's an interesting study. Which I hope all these are interesting studies. Papyrus is very similar to the word paper. That the word paper comes from papyrus. So, you got papyrus in your house, you don't even know it. And papyrus is in the history and study of the Bible. Now, papyrus is read. Not R-E-A-D like we do when we write something down on paper. But it's the plant, R-E-E-D-S. And it's like bamboo shoots that grow along the Nile River in Egypt. They make parchment paper out of it. In Cairo, today, you can locate little shops that are still undertaking the process of papyrus. I apologize. And you can purchase a replica of a parchment on how they did it long time ago. And it's interesting when you look at these, where I lived in Connecticut, there was the seaport, Mystic Seaport. And in the seaport, they have a printer's shop. And if you went there the right times, you can go there and watch how they made a printing on paper using a press and all the the dyes. You can go to the blacksmith shop and watch him do his work. It is all crumpled up and destroyed. That's where it occurs when parchment, when it is in a non and uh, a non arid climate. That is a rainy, wet climate. So if the climate is wet and rainy, you're not going to find too much parchment. So most of the papyri comes when it's found by the archaeologists in dry desert regions where there is very little moisture, where the humidity, humidity factors are down around 5 to 10%. So, there is a climate atmosphere when archaeology is able to find evidence of papyrus writing. Not all papyrus writings were able to be kept. They were destroyed. They faded away with time. They may have been burnt. They were destroyed by man or by elements of climate. Papyrus was the writing factual of early centuries. All the apostles would have written on papyrus. So, with all the apostles writing on papyrus, Paul's writings in papyrus, if it was not kept in a proper atmospheric condition area, the originals that Paul wrote would have been destroyed. If somebody got a letter from Paul, it may not have been a, 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 a biblical book letter, but somebody got a letter from Paul <clears throat> that I would assume he wrote more letters than what's in the Bible. And they opened up that letter and they read that, oh, what's Paul think he's saying? And throw it in the fire and throw it in the garbage. Well, that would not have been kept. When the king got a hold of Jeremiah's letter, the roll, and he took the pen knife and cut it in pieces and threw it onto the hearth to fire. Well, you're not going to find the originals. 
So the cause why the original papers are kind of hard to preserve <clears throat> is number one, what they've written it on. Number two, where what they wrote was kept. Number three, where wrote what yeah, where they what they wrote upon papyrus. What did the humans do? What did the devil do? And even what did God do? God told Jeremiah, write the words in a book and cast it in Euphrates. Well, God did not want those originals to be found. And surely the devil would try to stop the originals. What God wants to preserve. Anybody says they got the originals. Go down to the bookstore and get a King James 1611 Bible. Written in the original tongues. Okay? I've got something better than the original. I've got the authorized King James 1611 Bible. Now you got Unicall. Unicall script. It's the writing in manuscripts with all capital letters. Today we would say, he's yelling at me. You know, you type on Facebook, all capitals. And then you realize the cat block. I do that a lot. I'll be typing along, and then I look at the script, ah, oh, and I've got three paragraphs of yelling at people because I hit the cat block. Well, you love your Bible, you love God, it's like, you're yelling at me. It's like, no, no, I'm not yelling at you. I'm writing to you in Unical script. What? <laughs> you learned something today. Now, I know on Facebook you can't see it, but if you're watching this video, you see up here on the screen it says, Read Me. You see Holy Bible, Read Me, all in capital letters. That's Unicop. That is script writing, all capitalized. Okay. Now we got Minuscule. Minuscule would be hard to understand in this day and age. Because minuscule writing would be cursive writing, or likened to cursive writing, it would be handwriting script. And if you can look in the back of my, my picture here, let me bring it up. But you see my sign here because he loved, first loved us? See that because he, oh, the word of because and he? That would be minuscule handwriting. So it's a handwriting of script, lichen, that's minuscule. Unicow is all, all capital letters. And that's what they would find on the papyri, or papyrus. After the papyrus we have, and they started using leather. Now we have leather bound Bibles, leather bound books. But there was a time and period that leather was the pages. And then, of course, leather did not wear out as quick as papyrus would wear out. You would better have chances to find <clears throat> writings in the original that were written on, on leather that we're going to look at in a moment. You would not have found the writings, the originals, the Apostle John right in the book of Revelation because he wouldn't written it on leather. And so would Paul and Peter. They wrote on pap pap papyrus. And it would be, papyrus would be the, the closest imitation you have today would be newsprint. The paper that newspapers write on. And what do you do when you throw a newspaper out and you stack it in a closet somewhere, it turns yellow, it fades, it goes to dust and powder. So one of the, the vital types of manuscripts is what we call a parchment. 
Parchment is paper. And you can go down to the store and get parchment paper. A stationery store. Uh, I know stores today are very limited what they carry. But you can find online parchment paper. Parchment is biblical manuscript. And we're speaking about the skin of sheep and goats. Notice how sheep is used. Sheep are God's people. Goats are the unclean. Bible is for all, saved and lost. Now you got to rightly divide, but that Bible can be read by the saved and it can be read by the lost. they got to have proper application. They revealed that calf skin, baby cow, were, was improved for writing material than moreover than sheep and goat skin. So calf skin was better than sheep and goat, but you would know that Sheep and goat would be an inferior quality as far as price. And who could afford the leather of calf? It was a little tougher and harder to work with. And it's called the helium. V-E-L-L-U-M. See, now, look at that. You're learning. I'm studying the Bible and... and He's talking about papyrus, he's talking about parchment, he's talking about sheepskin, he's talking about beryllium, he's talking about calfskin. You know what these words are. Uh, I don't think, let me see my Bible. Uh, I don't know what you would say. My Bible. I didn't say. But there are Bibles out there that will say imitation leather or leather sprayed on. That would be the cover of your Bible, but there was a time when the writings that would make up our Bible was the leather that is your cover was the pages. It went clear unto the invention of printing. Now remember, these calfskins, these parchments, these papyri were written by hand. In A.D. 1450, a man named Gutenberg, G-U-T-E-N-B-E-R-G, is the first, Brit at first printing press and the first thing that went on that printing press was Gutenberg's Bible. Which there's a very few copies and a very few pages of the Gutenberg Bible. And my understanding is that the Gutenberg Bible was a, a press or the instruments, the materials of a press for great. Type of blood of Jesus Christ. So we have papyrus, type of paper. We go into skins of animals, the linium, parchment. We know these words. And then we come to the printing, the printing press. And today we got printers that, that spit out our work on paper. Until then, everything was hand copied. And my jury writing's material was the linear, the calfskin. So you had, you, you, now here's another word that you know, handmade. Well, up to the printing press, every Bible was 
hand made, hand written by a scribe. And it was written on the skins of a valium, a calf skin, baby cow. Or it was written on parch paper, which you could, didn't last long. Or it was written on sheep or goat skin. Up to the printing press. And with the printing press, then we're back to a firmer, stabler paper. Like you have in your Bibles today. And today, there's all different kinds of weight of paper. A higher criticism with things like authorship and the date of the book, to whom it was written, and where it came from, etc. <clears throat> like when we move to what the Bible, what the autographs. What the author what the author wrote on the dating of the authorship of Jeremiah if you found a Jeremiah written on uh, Valinium calfskin that's not original because in the book of Jeremiah itself excuse me again The book of Jeremiah itself tells us that he wrote on scrolls, a roll of the scroll, and it was able to be burned. If you say, oh, we got original writing of Paul, and it's on sheepskin, that's not the original writing of Paul, because he wrote on papyrus. Now, it may have been copied by a scribe, copied by a scribe, copied by a scribe, copied by a scribe who read of the papyrus. So you see, when we find these fragments, we find these studies. Those studies of the fragments that we find will tell you. All right. And they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, which don't mean nothing. All right. You can find a Hebrew fat fragment, the book of Hebrews fragment. It's not from the original author of Hebrews. Now, if there is any papyrus fragments of Hebrews, then you may have the pen of the original writer of Hebrews. But, you, you know, you would find fragments, broken up pieces. Rarely would you find a whole page of papyrus. But yet God said he will preserve the word. Now higher criticism, again, it's authorship, date of the book, to whom it was written, and where it came from, etc. Now lower criticism is the actual text. Is the word really in the text, or is it not in the text? Now, the modern Bibles would go against the lower criticism because you will find words that are not in the King James Bible. I would take the lower, lower criticism of modern Bibles in the King James Bible. And when I hear a modern Bible read, and I'm looking at my King James Bible, and that does not say with the King James Bible, all right, that's not the King, that's not the Word of God. That modern Bible is phony baloney, and baloney is not kosher. I'm a King James only Bible believing Christian. So, higher crit criticism is the author, the date. Who was it written? Jeremiah was written to Judah, and where it came from. Lower criticism is, does the text that is being read, seen, found, does the Dead Sea Scrolls match exactly to the text 
and the manuscript evidences of the King James. And if it don't, the lower critic criticism will say that the Bibles from Antioch, Westcott, and Hort, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are of Satan of the devil written with the hellfire of brimstone ink and that the words that come from Antioch the family of the King James Bible are of the pen of man and the ink of the Holy Spirit that's a lower criticism 